Sometimes I'm straight. This month I'm gay. I might eat a little coochie on any given day. No, no, cooch, cooch, cooch. Eat some cooch, cooch, cooch. I might eat some cooch, cooch. Oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome back to I Might Dip My Big Toe Into a Black Women's Coochie Pond. Month. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to my Chanel. It's your sister. For those of you guys who are subscribed, for those of you guys who are already my sisters, thank you so much for coming back. If you are not yet subscribed, <laughs> what are you waiting on? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe, okay? Like, share, leave a comment, okay? All right, y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue my Young, Famous, and African review. We're gonna be reviewing episode four through six in this review. Chop. Oh, before I continue, y'all already know what I'm about to tell y'all. Make sure that you're playing Coupe, make sure that you download Coupe. Um, this is my latest single that I have out. Video is dropping this Friday, all right? So make sure that you have the song in your uh, music library, that you're vibing to it. Um, and I thank you so much for your support. Now, let's go ahead and get into these episodes of Young, Famous, and African. Episode four through six. I feel like episode four through six is when the show starts to pick up for me. I'm I'm getting more entertainment. It's getting a little less. You know what? I was gonna say it. I was gonna say it's getting less annoying, but I, I'm lying. <laughs> I'd be lying. I feel like there's still some things that are annoying, like the constant meetups. Like I, I really feel like two people will meet up, and before their meetup is over, then they meeting up with another three people, and then before that meetup is over, we already going into a party. It's just a lot of meetups, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. Like, the episodes have, like, 50 scenes in one episode. It is a lot. Yeah. Tell me if you guys feel that same way. I just feel like it's just, it, it gets to be a lot in, in, in this season. But anyway, so, episode four opens... We have a meetup between Bonang and Annie. And again, I'm surprised by this because again, like I really thought that Swanky was bringing Bonang into the circle to kind of like mess with Ani. But it seems like Ani and Bonang already know each other. They already have a good relationship and their meetup is really, really cute. Um, so Bonang brings up Swanky. She's like, girl, what is going on between you and Swanky? And this is when Annie finally tells her side of the story. Remember in the last episode, Swanky gave his version. So here's Ani's version. She's saying that she had planned an event. She invited him over to discuss it. Swanky said, um, uh, we shouldn't do this event. Like he was trying to convince her not to do the event. And then the next thing you know, but she said that she planned the event to celebrate their group of friends. And I'm assuming it was to celebrate like the success of the show. That's what it looks like. Like it was, they were gonna bring together all the people like that are on the show with them. And also like people that are in Nigeria, the who's who of Nigeria. So she's saying like Swanky's telling her, no, it's not a good idea to do the event. But then she looks up and boom, pow, Swanky has the event. So she feels like he betrayed her, right? But Bonang is like, mm, you know, she's heard Swanky. Wait, did Bonang hear Swanky's side? When Swanky was in episode three, no, Swanky said what happened. To, uh, Swanky told his side to Nadia and Kanye. So he didn't tell Bonang. So Bonang, like, she still feels like something's a little iffy about this and she feels like it must be a deeper reason, right? But as Ani's saying her side of the story, I'm thinking, okay, that would kind of make sense as to why Ani was telling the promoter you know, um, maybe that's, that would make, that would make sense as to why Annie was talking shit about Swanky to the promoter. Like she kind of probably feels like, you know, he was discouraging her from doing the event. So she wanted to do the event without him, you know, not saying that you should talk shit about, about him, but 
Maybe you just tell the promoter, hey, you know what? I don't wish to do the event with Swanky and let's move forward, period. They finish off their conversation with, you know, talking about how um, Swanky ignored Ani at the party and then Bonang and, and Ani had this funny ass moment. People were walking around us without seeing us at that party. Maybe you and I were invisible. <laughs> We, we got ignored because obviously we are invisible. I'm sorry. That shit was hilarious to me. The cackling, that moment was hilarious to me. Bonang in that moment was very, very funny to me. I think there's a side of Bonang that unfortunately as the episodes go by, we just really don't see much more of. I think that she can be very, very funny. And I don't like that we didn't really see that in this television show. But anyway, continuing with this episode, continuing with Ani and Bonang's meetup, all of a sudden Zari shows up. I thought that was kind of weird how Zari shows up, Bonang didn't tell Annie that she was coming, so I was expecting a little riff-raff, but it looks like the girls have laid aside whatever tension they have from the first season. It looks like we, we're not going to get that this season. They're on a yacht with Bonang, champagne is being toasted, champagne is being caught back, bitch, we got hors d'oeuvres, we got shakuchi boards. The, th these bitches are living. They are on a yacht. They are living their best lives. The scenery is beautiful. So then Zari kills the fucking mood by bringing up Swanky. Now, while they're meeting up, Swanky is, uh, Nadia invited Swanky and Naked's girlfriend out. So they're meeting up at the same time. So now you have Ani at her meetup with Zari and, see, it's just be too many meetups. At her meetup with Zari and Bonang, Zari brings up Swanky. What is the deal with Swanky? And Zari, I forget if, if Zari says that Swanky tried to reach out to Annie. But anyway, somehow Swanky's voice note comes up. And Annie is saying, yeah, he did re try to reach out to me when he saw that Chubaba was in, in the blogs again for trying to spread his um, royal oats all over Africa. Um, he sent me a voice note, but I didn't really appreciate the voice note. The voice note was just not genuine to me. And she plays the voice note for the girls. Now, Bonang and Zari are like, I don't know, sis. This voice note sounds very genuine. Like, if we looked up genuine in the dictionary, if we looked up genuine voice notes in the dictionary, Swanky's picture would be there. This sounds kind of genuine to us, okay? But Annie wasn't buying it. And then you also have Swanky who brings up the voice note to Nadia and uh, Naked's girlfriend. Now, Zari brings up something that Swanky also says to the other girls too. Like Zari was like, you know, I think just, I think Swanky feels like you're acting brand new because like, you know, he introduced you to a new crowd and now you're, you're acting brand new. And then you have Swanky who's also saying the same thing to the girls. And again, I just, I don't know. Something about that just feels very bitch ashness to me. Just very bitch ashness to me. First of all, you're a man. You know what I'm saying? Why are you having these types of sentiments towards a girl? You know what I mean? And then also, if you do your research on Ani, Ani's been around for a long motherfucking time. She's been in the entertainment world in Nigeria for a long periodically time. And then third of all, she's married to Chubaba. Chubaba is a huge artist. So why would she be looking to you to introduce her to society like you know i just don't feel like that's just a good sentiment to have like just air out your grievances stick to the facts let's not bring up other shit to try to like throw daggers that you know and you're kind of playing yourself with that one i'm sorry like do y'all feel like swanky was right to air that out to zari or to the girls i don't know i just don't feel like that was right now during um his meetup with the girls um during swanky's meetup with the girls you have nadia who says you know, this kind of caught me by surprise too. Nadia was like, well, you know, now that you're not friends with Annie, I feel like Annie's not my friend. Like she was never really my friend. You guys were a package deal. And so now that y'all are not friends, I'm really realizing that she's not my friend. I felt like that came from left field. Now, one of my friends told me that as she was watching the show, she said that she doesn't like Nadia because she feels like Nadia is wishy-washy. And that was one of those, the examples that she used. And while I can see that, I also do feel like in real life, most of us have been here where somebody that you're close with has a person that they're close with, right? And so they start bringing that person around, y'all start hanging out. If they have a falling out, that doesn't necessarily mean that that person 
is going to remain your friend, especially if y'all didn't do the do your due diligence to to work out a relationship between the two of you outside of your mutual friend. So I can understand where Nadia is coming from, even though it kind of sounds like she's looking for something to be annoyed at, but I can understand where she's coming from. Let me know how y'all feel about that. So fast forward out of all these meetups, now we at dinner, okay? So you have Ani and Chubaba who meet up with Anzile for dinner. Then Naked and his girlfriend show up. Then you got Nadia who shows up, right? Dinner is cool. Everybody's catching up. I thought it was kind of weird that Nadia was there because again, we have Nadia who just said earlier that Ani is not her friend like that. So what you what, what are you doing at this dinner? <laughs> what are you doing at this dinner? I mean, her and Anjale are cool. Her and Naked are cool. I don't know. That, that was just a little weird to me. Now you have Anzile who starts talking about the fact that he's he really feels that he's at a moment in his life where he he is searching for love and looking at his two friends Ani and Chubaba looking at their relationship looking at their marriage it really makes him think about the fact that it is time for him to settle down it is time for him to take marriage with someone seriously and so they're talking about you know marriage and 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 the construct of marriage and love and out of nowhere you have Chubaba who starts lining out his vision about marriage and sex within a marriage and sex outside of marriage and Chubaba who literally is in the press for allegedly fathering a sixth child which would make four children outside of his marriage sits there and says with his entire chest that he believes that as a man, as a man, man have needs. As a man, man look at sex accordingly. Sex with your wife is making love. But there are some times outside of the marriage where you are indulging. You just want to fuck other women. He says this next to Ani. And so then you have Nadia who's like, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 let's, let's, let's bring that back. Do you believe that like in general that that's how men are or is this a belief that you have for yourself? And as she's saying that, you have Anzile who's getting mad at her. Like, oh, why, 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 why? See, you're, you're, you're trying to ask him all these questions. Why, why are you doing that? Why are you, 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 you're trying to catch him in something? She's like, no, 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 no. I'm trying to make him clear up what he's saying and I'm a hundred percent behind Nadia and so here we have Chubaba once again who says he believes that as even as a married man sometimes he just want to fuck every now and then that is how man are wired that is how a man is wired okay and he's saying this again in front of Ani who's been fighting for her life to clear up his face, his image, his reputation as a seed planter, okay? As a royal oat spreader, all right? Here he is, I'm barazing you. Oh my God, Chubaba and I have a kid on the way. Oh my God, Kunya Chubaba gonna love kid on the way. Oh my God, Chubaba to Shugon Bubun laptop and a Bubun no my God. Uba Ambaras? You not Ambaras? Are you not Ambaras? Why are you not Ambaras? Uba Ambaras said? When is enough enough for this motherfucker? When are you going to stop embarrassing your wife? When? 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 And here's the thing, right? You have Anzile who's trying to like help him like clean up his statement. But but Anzile, if we're going to keep it a buck, I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, listen, I, I, y'all know my sentiments for Anzile. I think Anzile is fine as fuck. I think he got big, big energy. Um, But Anzile, Chubaba is not only speaking for himself, he's speaking about you too. You have two baby mamas, okay? All right? Okay? He's speaking for you too. Okay, so you over here trying to make him moonwalk his ass to the back and trying to make him retrace his steps. Baby, he's speaking about himself and he's speaking about you too. So then you have Ani who leaves the dinner table upset. And here's my thing with Ani. Ani has so much heat for folks who have opposing views of the way her husband treats her. 
When are you going to have this attention for your husband? When are we going to see you check your husband? We need to see you check your husband. This is why people believe that you are suffering in your mileage because Despite all of this, you have this man who's saying this with his chest, saying it with his entire chest for the world to see in front of you. And the most you could do is walk away. This is literally Chubaba letting Ani and the world know his dick is for the community. His dick is public a uh, 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 public property. He might be exclusive with you, Ani, but his dick ain't. He might be married to you, Ani, but his dick ain't, okay? He might be married, his dick is single, all right? He is letting you know that. His actions are letting you know that. His words are letting you know that. It needs to click. It needs to click, okay? Get the mouse, make sure it clicks. Click the mouse. It's clicking. Make sure it's clicking. It needs to click, sis. He's letting you know where he stands. All right, so before this meetup is over, you already got another meetup. Now we got Swanky, Bonang, Zari, um, and, 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 and Fontana. They meet up. And then um, Swanky is letting Bonang know about the whole Lewis thing, right? So... Again, here's where Swanky really pisses me off. Oh my God. Like, so remember you have Lewis in a previous episode saying that he really looks forward to meeting with Bonang because he wants to explain to Bonang, uh, he wants to express his apologies for booking her for an event and, um, but not making sure that all her accommodations were taken care of. So you have Swanky telling her what Lewis was already planning on saying to her, but adding a whole other side of it that wasn't even true. So you have Swanky saying to Bonang that Lewis is going to talk to you about the fact that he had booked you for something in his country. And this is when I started kind of side-eyeing Bonang because she's like, his country, what country? He's like, Nairobi. She's like, Nairobi. I've never even been to Nairobi. Mind you, y'all, side note, I did my research and Twitter already done got the receipts. Twitter already has the receipts. This girl was bold-faced lying. Like, he definitely booked you for an event in his country, all right? So, I don't know, maybe she didn't recall, maybe she didn't remember, but in that moment, she's like, he's lying. Who is this that he's lying about my whereabouts? Um, but also, Swanky tells her that Lewis said that the reason she went back home was because she got to her hotel room and there were no flowers waiting on her, which was absolutely not true at all. So anyway, you have Lewis who comes in Lewis don't even know he's being lied on, you know, at the table before he gets there. Lewis gets there. Swanky says the incorrect story again. Lewis tries to clear it up. And he also says, hey, you know, at the time I was 23 years old. You know, it was my first event, first major event that I was putting together. I'm really, really sorry about how things ended up, right? So him and Bonan have a little back and forth. She says again that she doesn't recall ever even going to his country, ever being booked for this event. She's looking through her phone. She can't find it. Meanwhile, you have Zari that brings up the fact that she went out with Ani and Ani played her Swanky's voice note. So here is what Swanky says. Swanky says, uh-uh-uh, I was the one who brought up throwing the event together. He says that he arranged everything with her management. So he arranged everything with her management and all of a sudden he calls um, the promoter, either either the manager of the event or the promoter of the event, some somebody who was helping promote the event, right? Um, he calls that person, and that person's like, "Oh, wait a minute! Oh, Ani's on the other line." Wait, no, he calls the person, but the person was on the phone with Annie. So I guess like the person's like, "Oh, Annie's on the other line." He brings Swanky in, but as Swanky's coming into the phone call, he hears Annie talking shit about him. What was she saying? Oh, I know you want to do this with Swanky, but I actually want to host the event by myself. Swanky goes on to say that she said a lot of horrible things about him. He never really said what she said, um, but he says that the event was his idea. So my thing is, who the fuck is this, this promoter? Whoever this promoter is, is it me? This person is very messy. Why would you put swanky and ani on the phone without letting them know that they were both on the phone together usually when i 
am about to connect to people. I'm like, hey, so-and-so, so-and-so is on the phone now. Why didn't that take place? It just Something about this seems very fishy to me. Like, am I the only one that just, I don't, I don't like this. Something about this seems very, very fishy to me. Upon hearing Ani's real feelings about him, that's when Swanky decided, you know what, fuck you, I'm gonna have the event without you. Something, these stories, these two stories, it's like there's truth in there, but something is fishy. And I, I really feel like this third person needs to be brought up and it really needs to be brought up that why the fuck would this third person put y'all on the phone it, like it, it, it mm, i don't know i don't know this don't seem right to me all of a sudden we see lewis and fontana holding hands drifting off by themselves we see lewis basically asking fontana if he could take her on a date you know he expresses her interest in him you know they holding hands and shit I don't know, when did they build this type of connection to be holding hands like this? It just was weird to me. But anyway, child, they, you know, by the, by, by, they by the, 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 the shore, you hear the waves falling on each other. You, you hear the waves colliding. It's romantic. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's giving. It's giving. But I'm just lost as, as to when did they build this connection. But anyway, as Lewis is expressing her, his interest to her, you know, she's in her confessionals talking about how, I don't know if I like him. He's just too soft for me. And... Two things, okay. Another thing that caught me off guard is I don't know, I don't know why. I just felt like Lewis was giving me how you darn a little bit, so I didn't expect this connection. Okay, but okay, so obviously he's not how you darn, right? Um, but then also for her to call him soft and to say things like, oh, I could walk all over him, it's just really interesting how women <laughs> will literally look down on a man who's asking them out on a date. You see, the difference between Diamond and Lewis... See, Diamond took you upstairs. Lewis is trying to take you on a date. Diamond took you down. Lewis is trying to take you on a date. And so, women, sometimes we really have to acknowledge that... We're not attracted to the things that are better for us at times. And this is a prime example of that. So anyway, Louis and Fontana head back to the dinner table and Swanky brings up the fact that Swanky brings up the fact that Diamond and Fontana had a date at his house, child. You know, he basically tells the table they fucking. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, Zari's there. Zari's like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Okay, so this is another one that is another one that he's taking down. Okay, interesting, very interesting. And so then you have Lewis who says, you know, Fontana, like, you're an artist. I, I think that you should be known for your music, not for being Diamond side bitch. And baby. <laughs> The way the girls attacked him for this, was I the only one who was like, why are you booing him? He is correct. So you have Bonang who's eating his ass up. First of all, if she want to be a city girl, she could be a city girl. I have, I have run through all the rich men of Africa. I have run through to, to so many rich men of Africa. I can do what I want. If I want to fuck, I will fuck. You know, and here's the thing. Yes. I believe as a women's, if you want to take down nigga after nigga after nigga, yes, if that's what you want, if that's your prerogative, get your Bobby Brown on. But he does bring up a good point, which is you're an artist. We should know you for your artistry. Here you are in South, South Africa. You're from Ghana. You know, you should be using this time to let South Africa know what time it is with you. What's your music? What are your goals? The way they both just ate his ass up. You have Diamond. I'm not his side bitch. I ain't nobody's side bitch. I mean, then you have Zuri there just cackling. You know, it just was so, it was so exhausting. Then you had Bonang who brought up the whole thing, uh, thing with the booking again. And she starts really demeaning him now. Now, now, like, the man apologized to you, right? But now you bring up the booking again. What do I look like going to Nairobi? I have never been to Nairobi. I, what, you are a liar. You are a liar. I mean, it just was crazy. Then you have Lewis trying to clear it up. And then you have Swanky who starts dragging his ass too. You have 
Swanky, who literally is pushing the whole narrative that, oh, you did not have her accommodations ready because she did not, she did, you, 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 because she went back to the hotel room, she went home because she went to the hotel room and she did not have no flowers. She left the country because she didn't have no flowers. And then you have, so you have Swanky lying on him, but then also, was it me or I didn't like how Bonan kept bringing his country into it. And it kind of reminded me of like the diaspora wars that be going on with Africans, Africans versus black Americans, black Americans versus Caribbeans and so, so on and so forth. You know, uh, blacks who are overseas versus black American. Like it just, be, it's all these diaspora wars, right? And what I'm, what, what I was noticing in this conversation was Bonang, the way she was talking about this man's country, it just was very demeaning. It it, 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 it was very unbecoming. You know, I ain't never been to Nairobi. I, I don't know anything about, you know, Lewis's country. But as a black person, as a Haitian black person, I know how proud I am to be Haitian, despite what anybody says, despite what the media says. Like, I've always used my platform to voice that I'm very proud Haitian. And, you know, I feel that if somebody was at a table demeaning my country like that, I would feel a way about that. Why are you bringing my country into it? Like, this has nothing to do with my country. I told you I fucked up your booking. I am apologizing. And you are literally demeaning me and demeaning my country. And then you have Swanky, who's like, literally it turned into a bullying session. And the only person who wasn't bullying him at the table was Zari. And that's where the episode left off. That scene really pissed me off. Swanky, you lied on this man. Bonang, you lied on this man and you were demeaning his country. Fantana, you have rock for brains. Like you just have rocks for brains. It just was a very ugly scene and I felt really, really bad for Lewis. Like, I felt bad for him because he's trying to hang out with these people and this is how these people are treating him. So now we're on episode five and episode five, they're still at this dinner where everybody's ganging up on Lewis and Lewis just leaves and I really feel bad for him. You have three people basically like chin checking him and I, I, I just, I, I really felt bad for him. I really felt bad for him. So anyway, Next scene, you have Zari that reaches out to Louis. Um, you see Louis by himself. He is at his apartment complex or maybe condo, swimming by the pool, swimming in the pool. And Zari comes and she meets up with him. And, you know, she wants to hear his side of the story. And again, Louis tells her what happened, the correct story. And she feels bad for him. She's like, you know, he's taking accountability for it. Bonan was being totally out of line. Swanky was being totally out of line. And, you know, as a viewer, again, this just feels like bullying. And so you have Zari who says, well, you know, do you want to speak to Bonan about this again? And Lewis says, fuck no. And I'm, I'm, I'm 100% behind that. I would never talk to that bitch again. I just wouldn't. Like, the way she talked to that man at the, at the table, it just was ridiculous. And again, the way she was condescending to his country, and I think he brings that up too, it's like, she was doing just way too much for the cameras. Like, just way too much. I, I wouldn't talk to that bitch ever again. Like, fuck you. I told you I, I apologize. At least he knows he did that. He took accountability and he moves on. That's what a real nigga does, period. Now we get this dramatic meetup from Swanky and Ani, okay? Finally, they're meeting up and they're gonna address what has happened between them. So first things first, Swanky brings up his voice note because apparently he is well aware that Ani shared his voice note with some of the other girls. And so she says, yeah, I shared the voice note. I just felt like that was not you. This does not sound, it did not sound like my swanky. It did not sound like Jeremiah. You know, first of all, when she came in, she called him Jeremiah. Not, 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 not she called him by his government name. But yeah, it didn't sound like my friend. It did not sound like you. It didn't feel genuine. I like that she took ownership for the fact that it was wrong to share the voice note she apologized for that so now we're getting into the real reason why they fell out so you have swanky who brings up the fact that ani is going around saying that he stole her idea for the event and she's like basically i'm not gonna address that i'm not gonna address that why not why don't you want to address it so then he brings up the fact that he overheard her 
talking shit about him. And she's like, basically like, yo, that never took place. The, the phone call that you're talking about never took place. As he's addressing the fact that he overheard her talking shit about him, he's like, you know, how dare you? Like, I'm the one who made you more known. I'm the one who was showing you off to society in a way that you weren't being showed off before. And she's like, yeah, you know what? I'm not even going to address that. I'm not even going to address that because like you're, fuck you're, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, you're out of your fucking mind. While I understand Swanky being upset, is given delusions of grandeur because again this woman is well known she's been well known then she's married to a man who's well known so if she was looking for a coat to ride on it wouldn't be yours it, it just wouldn't be yours swanky i know you have a lot of coats okay swanky got 50 11 coats but i'm telling you if she needed somebody's coat to ride on it wouldn't be yours okay so he keeps insisting that he does have proof of this certain phone call that she's denying took place and the only reason why um he's not providing it to her because she's like okay well play it play the phone call and he's like no no the only reason why i'm not gonna provide you with it is because i wouldn't want it to get out there and for your kids to, to hear how you're talking about uncle swanky like this would really break your kid's heart and i'm just like mm, okay now i'm calling cap because i'm sorry if i'm telling you that i have proof of a phone call I'm playing it for you. I'm playing it for you. Okay? If I'm gonna I'm not gonna call your bluff with no without being ready to pull the trigger. I'm going to put my finger on the trigger every fucking time. So that made me side eye swanky. He still doesn't tell her or tell us, the viewers, what is it that she said. All he's saying is that she told the promoter that the promoter should not, that she wanted to do the event by herself. While I can see how that's fucked up, I don't feel that that's her saying something fucked up about Swanky. So somebody lying here. Somebody is lying here, but Ani's like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I love you, Swanky. I love you. I just want us to make up. I want to put, I want to put this behind us. And Swanky is frustrated because he's like, you know what? Yeah, you want to put it behind us, but that's not you really addressing the issue. And I've been here before. I've had an argument or two or three or 50, 11 times where, you know, I, I'm bringing my grievances to somebody and what what my grievances are never really actually get addressed. So I can understand that being frustrating for Swanky. Um, at the same time, I understand Ani, she's probably looking at the situation like this motherfucker is saying a whole bunch of delusional shit. You saying shit that, that like, I, I don't care. Let's just, are we going to hash this? Are, are we going to put this behind us or what? I just want to move forward. So they move forward. They cheers each other. I think they hugged and that was it. But you have Swanky in his confessional saying, you know what? Like, you know, I'm going to be cordial, but now I'm just, I'm, I'm keeping one eye open. They both literally have the same feeling towards each other. And you know why? Because the issue wasn't hashed out. When you don't really hash out some shit, you're still going to leave with unresolved feelings you're still gonna leave with resentment because y'all didn't really hash out your issue and me as a viewer i'm confused i don't know who to believe here so basically they both leave this unhashing with the sentiments that they love each other but they don't trust each other that's it so now you have nadia who meets up with um who is nadia meeting up with she has dinner with kanye and uh, she lets kanye know what chubaba said about <clears throat> his dick being for the streets okay she lets him know true baba say you know what yeah i'm married i make love to my wife but i'm fucking these hoes <laughs> i'm gonna make love to my wife but these hoes gonna get this dick <laughs> you know and you have connie who's like wow wow so then you have lewis who joins them and lewis is telling them about what happened with you know, how he was bullied at the dinner with Swanky and Bonang and Fontana. Um, you know, he tells them the Bonang situation and the girls kind of have the same sentiments as like, as Zari. Kanye feels like Swanky is responsible because Swanky brought him into that situation. Swanky didn't have control of the situation like he's the one who brought all the friends together and kind of just let like the event just run amok so she feels like swanky's responsible and she's absolutely correct then he talks about the whole moment with fontana where she was saying you know where, where he was telling her hey you know 
you got your music, you shouldn't be known, you know, for being diamond side bitch, you should be known for your artistry. And Nadia did kind of echo Bonang and saying, you know, that kind of can be come off as misogynistic. But again, I stand behind Lewis's sentiments on that. Girl, you're being given this platform. You're too focused on what's going on with Diamond and Zari and you're too focused on that shit. You're the new girl on the block. You need to be promoting your music. You need to be promoting what, what do you have going on? What is going on? So now there's another meetup. So this meetup looks like, I don't know, a kind of like a derby event. I don't know, like the girls are wearing like derby hats or whatever. And everybody, like the entire friend group is there this time except for Diamond. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know, where the fuck is Diamond at? But anyway, so Louis is there, everybody's there, except for Bonang. So the issue with Fontana comes up again. You have Fontana who tells Louis, you know, she did feel offended by his comments. You know, Louis is like, you know, this is this is how I meant this. Like, you should be known for your talents, you know? I'm sorry if it, it offended you. What I like about Louis, he's constantly taking accountability, you know? I do feel like everybody's kind of giving him a hard time, but I like the fact that he takes accountability and he moves on, right? You have Fontana who reveals that she went on a date with Diamond. Louis is shocked because again, this kind of echoes the fact that, you know, remember Louis and Diamond have a mutual ex. Now, you know, he's interested in Fontana and Fontana is over there riding uh, Diamond's dick into oblivion. So, you know, this is awkward again. It's, just, it's an awkward situation again. Everybody's talking about Diamond and Fontana. You know, you have Zari like, well, damn. It's okay for Diamond and Fontana to be fucking, but the friend group had a whole problem with me and Anzile being interested in each other. What is that about? And I feel her on that because it's like, literally, we're constantly reminded about how Diamond can do what he wants, right? But Zari doesn't let him do what he wants, but we see him doing what he wants. And the moment Zari wants to do what she wants, it's a problem. You know what I mean? So I, I feel her on that. So yeah, Fontana brings up the fact that Diamond told her that Zari wants to have more children with him. And Zari's like, I mean, I already have two kids with this man. Like, are you jealous? And Fontana's like, I'm jealous. Jealous of what? It's like, girl, why do you keep bringing this shit up? Fontana, girl, why are you so pressed about what? 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 Is she okay? Is she okay? No, for real. Is she okay? You know, and then you have Fontana saying, I mean, no, I ain't jealous. No, I don't want to be nobody's baby mama. You know, okay, so cool. Then, then don't be nobody's baby mama. Like, that's Zari's, Zari's sentiment. is like, okay, well, good luck. Good luck with Diamond. Do you. What, what, what is going on? I'm puzzled. And it's so funny because I don't know what she said. I think during this event, she said something about, um, um, that... She was trying to reach out to Diamond, but he didn't answer. And Zari was like, yeah, because he's on tour. And <laughs> Fontana thought he was somewhere else. She's like, no, no, he's on tour right now. And she's like, oh, ooh, oh, okay. Yeah, like, girl, girl, it's like you're trying to, you keep trying to one-up Zari with a man that you just met last week. Zari has been in a relationship with this man, out of a relationship with this man, a co-parenting relationship with this man she knows this man better than you why do you keep trying to one up her if y'all gonna fuck just fuck but stop addressing her about a nigga that you just fucking it, you're, you're just coming across very pressed and you're pressed at the wrong person Louis and Fontana who continue their conversation and Fon and and you have Louis who really tells her again like listen like I really want to take you on a date and Fontana says to him well if you want to take me on a date you have to fix things with Bonang. You know, I just didn't like the way you handled things with her. I, I really think this girl has rocks for brains. Rocks for brains. Because how do you think Louis owes that woman an apology? Especially after the way she talked to him. Like, I'm sorry, no. But he obliges her. So anyway, child, now everybody meets up for a cocktail making class, right? And at this cocktail making class, you have Nadia and Swanky that make a special announcement. They let everybody know that um, Bonang is no longer in the WhatsApp group. She chose to left the WhatsApp group. So she's not going to be hanging out with their group anymore. What is the reason? She feels that everybody ganged up on her. What? 
I was so confused. I'm like, I, I never saw anyone ganging up on Bonang. I never saw anybody like talking, sh talking sideways to her. I just didn't, I didn't understand where that came from. It's kind of giving that Bonang came and maybe she doesn't like the way that she was received. Maybe she felt like she should have been received with more reverence. And you have Kanye kind of echo that. Kanye was like, you know, listen, in this group, nobody's a star of the group. Everybody's a star here. So it just feels like Bonang was, I don't know, she wants to be placed on a pedestal and she wasn't placed on that pedestal. It's either that or something else that we're, I just, I, as a viewer, I'm not aware of. I, I, I don't know. What, I, I don't understand. So she's not going to be part of the friend group anymore. Boom. Nobody gives a fuck. That was the funny part. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody gave a flying fuck. So anyway, cocktails continue to be made. So somehow they bring up the whole Bonan and Lewis thing. And, you know, Lewis airs Bonan out. Like, listen, bro, like, I apologize to her. You know, like... I tried to apologize to her. She wasn't having it. Like, she was very, like, belittling to me. And as, as he's sharing what happened, you know, at that dinner party, you have Swanky who starts going off on him. No, you're not about to talk about my friend. She's not here to defend herself. You're not going to talk shit about my friend. Then he starts going off on Lewis. And Lewis is like, yo, like, first of all, I'm just trying to tell my side of the story. I apologized to her and she didn't accept my apology. She started being demeaning to me. And Swanky is like yelling at him, going off on him, calling him names, basically kind of calling him soft. Like it just was ridiculous. So as this is all happening, Lewis leaves and I'm 100% behind Lewis. It just was weird. Like Swanky's whole thing was what? Well, Y'all not gonna talk shit about my friend. Nobody's talking shit about your friend, but your friend was very shitty. You had a shitty ass friend who treated him like shit for no fucking reason. And he's just trying to voice his side of what's going on. And I feel like every time Lewis is trying to tell his side of what happened when he booked her or tell his side of how he felt when he was trying to apologize to her, the group as a whole just keeps shutting him down. And it's just, I, it's very, it's very weird to watch and disheartening to watch annoying to watch sad to watch because like I really feel sincerely bad for this man like why are y'all talking to this man like this episode six we are still uh at the cocktail making thing and so you know Lewis leaves he walks out I guess he sees Kanye outside and they sit down together and Kanye tells him listen you've apologized don't apologize no more don't explain yourself no more you took accountability move on fuck anybody who don't take your apology so that's that and just when you know i thought there was nothing about lewis that was gonna you know make my booty itch here come lewis with this surrogate thing so he says that he's 25 and he's always wanted children by the age of 30 you know he heard that zari is interested in surrogacy and he asked Kanye what did he think about him talking to Zari about possibly partnering up on a surrogacy journey together now <laughs> what <laughs> what Louis what the fuck <laughs> why why and he was just talking about how you know He's looking for certain genes. He's looking for, you know, his child, his children to come out a certain way. And he's really happy that he's hearing that Zari is talking about that. And so he feels like, yeah, why not? This is somebody who's interested in what I'm interested in. So what do you think about me talking to her about that? Connie looks like me, flabbergasted, and we leave it at that. So then you have a meetup between Swanky, DJ Naked, and his girlfriend. Swanky said he fresh out of a doctor's appointment, and the doctor told him uh, for his health, he should not trust any more bitches. Okay, I mean, you thought you ate that. You didn't. I thought that was very corny. Um, while they meet up, Connie and Nadia meet up. It's just so many meetups. It's a whole lot of meeting ups. My goodness. Kanye basically echoes to Nadia what I've been saying. She says that, hey, Swanky's looking for a new Ani. And Bonan was going to be that. Which is why Swanky was upset when he brought Bonan into the fold. We we left. Remember when, when he introduced Bonan to everybody at that party? Everybody left. People didn't give a fuck. They went outside. 
and Bonan did not get the entrance that she thought she deserved or the entrance that he felt she thought she deserved either. Louis and Fontana are on a date. Baby, Louis is so happy he did not have to make up with Bonan's crazy ass. He gets to now date Fontana in peace. You know, he bought her some flowers. He brings her on a salsa dancing date. So it's someone there who's supposed to teach him how to salsa dance. And I could not believe that this girl could not move her body. What was going on with Fontana? And Louis said, you got all that booty, but you can't, like, what? Like, you got all that ass, and you can't coordinate it and, so and do a simple two-step? Like, you can't do a step in the name of love? My goodness. Like, and then, you know, she, listen, Fontana said she is Ghana born. Ghana born, American raised. I would like to see some ID. Uh-uh, sis. I would like to see some ID. First of all, I'm sorry, like the simple two step, you couldn't do that. Like, just as a black person, period. I have never seen a black person not be able to do a, a little. What? 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 Anyway, the date is kind of cute. You know, Lewis is pulling out all the stops. Like I said, he gave her flowers. He's sweet talking her, but she clearly doesn't feel him. The thing with the thing with Fontana, girls like Fontana don't like men who actually court them with a purpose. She just wanna get fucked. She wanna be thrown around, she wanna be thrown around. She wanna fight baby mamas, you know what I mean? Like, she wanna be a baby mama fighter. That's where she belongs. Uh, she doesn't give me someone who's actually really looking for something genuine. And I, I, I feel like some people might look at this like, oh, well, she's young, she's young, she's 25. She's 25. She's not 17. We're not talking about a 17 year old. We're talking about a 25 year old. Like you should know the difference between somebody who's playing in your face and somebody who's literally genuinely interested in you. And when you know the difference between the two, you should be able to behave accordingly. I have Andile and Naked, they meet up. And I'm sorry, is it me or we're just not getting enough Andile this season? Like what is going on? I haven't seen Andile since he cussed. I haven't seen Andile since he cussed out Kanye and her dark skin knuckles. Like I have not seen it. So, I feel like I'm not seeing enough of Anzile in this season. What is going on? What is going on? So, Anzile shares with Naked that he's just really looking for love. And he's just come to the realization that that's not what Zari wanted. Naked was like, oh, so you, you feel like that's not what Zari wanted? Why? Because she dumped you? Now, we all know Zari didn't want to dump this man. Neither of them wanted to dump each other. It's just out of respect for Diamond. But anyway, Anzile says, you know what? I really, really want to revisit love. I, I really want to possibly revisit getting together with one of my baby mamas. I think that's the solution. I, I'm not trying to be out in the streets for much longer. Anjale expresses it's time he's grown. It's time that he takes love seriously. And Naked was like, my nigga, like, as men, we don't heal, we hold. Baby, that was the realest thing I've heard this man say. As men, we don't heal, we hold. Oh my goodness. One thing I will say about Naked, even though I really don't care for him or his storyline or, or his girlfriend, sometimes he really does hit you with a couple bars, and that was a bar. So now we have Andile who meets up with Ani and Chubaba, you know, and he's telling them, like, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a place in my life where I want to revisit love. So now we get introduced to Seba Batso. Seba Batso, I'm going to call her Seba. Seba is one of his ex-wives slash baby mamas. You know, she comes to the lunch with them. She's gorgeous. And that is immediately when I knew. Like, upon seeing Seba, I said to myself, see, I know, I knew this man had that dick. You cannot convince me otherwise. I know Andile got that Mufasa dick. He got that Namoya Baba dick. That nigga got pride rock dick. I just know it. I felt it in my spirit. And upon seeing that woman and seeing her beauty, I knew that man got that dick. I knew it. So anyway, while they're talking to each other at the dinner table, at the lunch table with Ani and Chubaba, you know, he's stroking Seba's hair. You know, they have clear chemistry. You know, and they're just talking about how they spent the last 20 years going back and forth between each other. And Seba's like, yo, like, it's time. We need to define what we are. It's been 20 years. 20 what? No. See? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And so now you have Anzile who asked Chubaba, Chubaba, how did you know that Ani was the one? Chubaba says he finally knew that Ani was the one where when he came to a point in his life where everything was good, he's a star, he's traveling the world, he buys a big ass house, he goes in the, into the house, but it's empty. 
He buys this big home. He goes into the home. It's empty. That's when he knew it was time to settle down with Ani. And Andile is sitting there taking this all in as if this is the most profound shit he's ever heard. I'm sorry. That ain't it to me. That ain't it to me. Chubaba again. When he talks about Ani, he talks about her as if she's like some type of accessory. He does he didn't say, you know what? I was at a point in my life where I realized that this woman had poured so much into me. I could not live my life without her. I knew that I wanted to make her my wife because this is her character. This is her personality. None of that. I bought a big ass house and it was empty and I needed somebody in this bitch. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? And then you have Andy that, oh my God, you know what? That's so true. Like, what? I can't. Y'all niggas are too old for this shit. Y'all niggas are too old for this shit. See, now I gotta drag Undilet. Cause see, you cute, but you ain't that cute. You, you're not, you're not that cute now. Okay? This is not a reason for settling down. Is it or am I wrong? Now, y'all, after this meetup, we have Kanye who meets up with Zari. Kanye, you were dead ass wrong for this shit. You were dead ass motherfucking wrong. So. Connie meets up with Zari and she tells Zari about her conversation with Louis. She tells Zari that Louis wants her eggs. Louis wants to make a baby with her immediately and he's gonna be asking her for that. That was fucked up. That is not what that man said. It is something about this group purposely sabotaging Louis. Every time Louis opens his mouth, it's like y'all are dedicated to sabotaging his words and using his words against him. I don't like that. I don't like that. That was not your place. That was very evil of you. It just was unbecoming, even for somebody like you. Connie, where is your daughter? Where is the, the fraud nigga that you fucking with? Where, what's your storyline this season? What you got going on? Cause you in everybody business. Where is your fucking business? Find your ass, find you some shit to do. That shit was, that shit annoyed me. For real, for real. It was fucked up to do that. So now you got Zari like, what the fuck? Hit my ex. My ex? My ex. What? I, I, just, it was just fucked up. It was fucked up to me. Let me know what you guys thought about that. Now we see Undile meet up with his other ex-wife, Rosette, who he has a child with as well. Does he? I think he has two children with both women, I believe. But anyway, he has children with her. They, first of all, she's even more gorgeous than the other wife. I'm like, okay, both of these women are beautiful. He clearly has a type. He likes tall women, skinny women, slender women. Um, now they talk about them um, and what happened with their relationship. They have a very toxic relationship. Um, Rosette felt like, uh, Rosette has some animosity towards Seba and the, feelings, the feeling is mutual. Seba's main problem with Rosette was the fact that she, liked, she lacked boundaries when she was with Anzile. That Rosette would not respect their relationship. That it just felt like she was constantly butting into what they had going on. Um, Rosette makes it clear that she still wants to be with Anzile. She wants to revisit that. She, Rosette want that dick. Rosette wants that dick. The way she be smiling at Anzile, that is a, can I please get some dick? Smile. Ladies, We y'all know that smile. <laughs> she giggling that shit that ain't even funny. This man had told one joke. She cracking up. She, ah, <laughs> she, she pounding her chest and shit. That lady wants some dick. That lady needs dick relief ASAP. Fast forward, y'all. It's Zari's birthday dinner. Everybody comes in. Why are... Undile's exes coming in to the dinner party before Undile even gets there. First, you got Rosette that shows up. She sits right next to Zari. That's her assigned seat. Then you have Undile that comes and he doesn't sit next to Rosette. He sits on the opposite end of the table. Later on, you have Seba who comes in. She sits on the other side. What the fuck is this? Undile, why would you bring your two ex-wives who you are currently having 
them undergo a pussy fight in order to see who's going to pussy fight to the death to get you back. Why would you invite them to Zari's birthday dinner? Zari, whose coochie you was trying to snack on a couple weeks back. This is messy. Sir, you are messy as fuck. <laughs> this is fucking messy. Then it gets messier because later on, you have both of the women start arguing over Anzile at Zari's birthday dinner. Like, like, what the fuck is going on? See, this is how I know this man got that dick. I'm convinced that dick, Anzile got a bigger dick than that damn table. Okay? These bitches are down to his, was almost a, a, a girlfriend birthday dinner fighting over who gonna get him and why the other one shouldn't be with him. It just was awkward. Rosette, who tells Seba, um, the only reason why you had a baby was to keep him around. Oh my God, you have Seba who's like, well, you don't have any boundaries. You were all up in Andile's face and coming over and calling him at all hours of the night while you were a whole married woman. So apparently Rosette had got remarried to somebody else. But even in her marriage, she was she would call on Andile like if her car broke down, if she needed some, if, if, if some wires at her house needed some fixing, if she needed somebody to, uh, 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 I don't know, fix a pipe or two. And when I say fix pipes, I don't mean just the pipes that's under the sink, baby. She was trying to have him fix all types of pipes while she was in a whole other marriage. I mean, both of y'all hoes are messy. This is a big old mess. And mind you, they are doing this at Zari's birthday dinner. It, it, this is, what, what the fuck is going on? What's going on? What's going on? What, what, what's happening here? That was just fucking awkward. Now you're hearing all these whispers about Louis wanting Zari's eggs. How is it that everybody at the table is aware of this story, this incorrect story about Louis asking Zari for her eggs? Obviously, they've been spreading that around amongst the group. You have um, Swanky who tells Fontana not to sit next to Louis. And um, he's saying, yeah, because, you know, he wants Zari to give him her eggs. You know, um, Louis is like, why are you telling Fontana not to sit next to me? And he's like, well, why are you asking Zari for her eggs? And it's just, it's just messy. It's just fucking messy. And so Swanky starts yelling at Louis again. You got Fontana who's like, wow, he's a fucking weirdo because weren't you just trying to, didn't you just take me on a date? But bitch, you're a fucking weirdo because why do you care about him wanting somebody else's ex? You're fighting for your right to be Diamond's side bitch. You need to focus on that shit right there. Focus on being a side bitch to Diamond. Why are you worried about what the fuck Lewis is doing? And, and so, I don't know, it's just awkward. It's just awkward you have a, a, a screaming match between... Lewis and Swanky again. Swanky's telling Lewis, uh, Lewis is telling Swanky, listen, like, don't be rolling your eyes at me. Don't say shit to me. I don't know who, I don't know who the fuck you're talking to. Like, at this point, me as a viewer, I want Lewis to whoop Swanky's ass. Seriously. Because I don't know who the fuck Swanky think he is. I, I don't know. Like, Swanky, you're doing a lot this season. Okay? I don't know if it's the, the <laughs> he's sitting at this dinner table in his best Rafiki from the Lion King wardrobe. And he just thinks he is above everybody. I don't understand what's going on with Swanky this season. Like, Swanky was very likable last season. What the fuck happened this season? Like, why are you going from a fave to... You're just killing the fucking vibe now. And why do you have such a hard-on for Lewis? What did Lewis do to you? What did Lewis do to you? I don't know. I just feel like Lewis just seems like an easy target for you. I, I don't understand. Like, I just don't understand what's going on. I, the, the, <sighs> do y'all understand what's going on? Because I don't. I, I don't understand what the heat is for Lewis and why everyone continuous, continues to gang up on him. And you have Connie there. Connie, you're responsible for this because... You're going around telling everybody that this man asked for this woman's eggs and he did not ask for her eggs. He actually asked you in confidence for advice. That's a real fucked up thing to do. Put your feelings aside on what you think about him doing that. Like whatever your feelings are, put that aside. It's really fucked up for you to do that when all this man did was ask you for sincere advice and you go and you spread misinformation. Why are y'all so dedicated to beating this man up? I'm sorry, like, if I was him, I'd beat all y'all ass. 
I'm, I'm beat your ass. I'm beat your... Everybody getting their ass whooping. Ass whooping. Ass whooping. Everybody getting their ass beat. Everybody. I be beating everybody ass at this point. Because I feel like that's what y'all are asking for when it comes to Lewis. This is bullying. It's weird. Y'all are too old for this. Y'all are too old for this. Is it that we're lacking storylines? What is it? It's given like... It, again, it's given love and hip hop. I don't like it. 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 Do y'all like it? Drop down, <laughs> drop down the comments and let me know if y'all like these episodes. If y'all like the way things are going in season two. You know, I'm going to come back and we're going to do episode seven through nine to finish this out. But I do not like this. I don't like this at all. I don't know y'all all right so let me know your thoughts <laughs> like share subscribe if you haven't already drop down in the comments let me know your thoughts on these episodes and i'll see you guys in the next video